gang, here we go. Dream or what wishes believe in. So I've actually already talked about this one a little bit, but it is origin day. So this one fits in there a little bit more in this sequence. So if you're just kind of watching these out of order at some other later point, uh, I'll go over this one real quick. This is the 135 C. So this one kind of bucks the trend that I'll get into when I start talking about the larger origin ships. But if you're going to get one of the 100 series starters, I recommend getting as opposed to the 100i or the 125a that you get the 135c instead, because this one has all the cargo of the 100 and more. And the only thing you get with the combat version is two missiles. They're size one, not worth it. Uh, now, origin ships generally as a whole, they fly much better than ships of similar sizes. They're just going to be much faster, much more responsive, um, and they're typically going to be undergunned. And uh, we don't have armor in the game yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be under armored, too. You are clear to launch. So this is the ship that I've been using to go back and forth between Crusader and Grim Hex on this little journey I've been taking, uh, which if you miss the intro or the first episode, I just know that YouTube will usually suggest these things wildly out of order and people will come in in the middle and be like, what the hell is he talking about? Uh, I decided for 318 patch, 318.1 has not dropped as of yet that I would try to kind of take an accounting of all the ships that I have in my hangar just to see if there's anything that I want to melt or get rid of. And as I did that, manually move one at a time all of my ships from Orison up to Grim Hex. And one of the reasons I wanted to do that, well, as I said, it's kind of twofold. I want to see if there's any ships in my fleet that I could potentially melt down. And if they actually had a purpose in the verse or in the carnival, which is the org I have, that I could go ahead and explain sort of what I intend to use that ship for or how it fits into the structure of the carnival. And as I've been going through that journey, this is the ship that I've been using to ferry myself back and forth between uh, Grimhex to Orison. So I'll go from Grimhex to Orison in this ship, pick up a new ship and fly back and then uh, reclaim the 135C and then fly back to Orison. And so I've just sort of been doing this flight over and over and over again. So why am I doing it in this ship? because this ship is incredibly easy to fly. It's fast and it's relatively small. Pirates aren't looking at this ship to blow it up. They're just kind of like, it's a 135C, we don't care. So undergunned, uh, but I wouldn't even say origin ships are necessarily fast, they are quick. So they're very responsive, even when you have them under speed, like when they're going over their SEM speed, like I am right now, still pretty responsive. Like uh, it'll change vector pretty quickly and that scales. So even on the larger ships, that scales. Um, that's really about all I gotta say about this one. This one's a starter. Uh, like most origin ships, you're kind of paying a luxury tax with them. They're kind of the BMW brand of uh, of the verse. So um, sort of twofold, they're well-made. Uh, they move and maneuver very well, and they're typically piloted by douchebags such as myself. But there you can kind of see its maneuverability. Its ability to accelerate is really good.
so the 100i is a little bit of an outlier. This is the 300 series, which is, well, for a long time, this was Origin's starter series. And this is kind of where the anachronism starts. So this was their starter and they're generally bigger than the other starters. So when I say starter, I'm talking, well, 100i, but like, uh, think the Aurora Mustang, that this was supposed to be kind of a contemporary of the Aurora Mustang, but it cost about as much as an Avenger Titan. And so people would be looking at this and sort of saying, okay, well, it's clearly better than the Aurora and the Mustang, but it costs pretty close to a Titan and the Titan is clearly better than this. And this is kind of the called a problem or a benefit of origin ships is that they're kind of tweeners. Like every ship they have is half a size too big for the category that they're kind of put into and half a category too, or half a size too small for the next category up. So they're kind of these weird tweener ships and that holds true all the way up that they tend to be bigger than their contemporaries, but smaller than the next ship up. But their price point is near enough that you might as well go for the next ship up. And that's one of the reasons that you so rarely see origin ships over either the cheaper ship that's underneath them or the more expensive ship that's over top of them. They all fly really well. Uh, they have decent weapons, but they're they're not fighting ships. They're really more about the performance and the luxury on the inside, which hasn't really come into play, but it's starting to. Uh, so let's take a look inside because the 300 series really is uh, relatively modern. So, I mean, you can kind of see what they're going for here. You got your wine glasses where you could put clothes. Uh, I think that's just, yeah, it's just inventory. You got a gun rack. Um, you've got a full on counter here, which is again, just kind of pointless. I think that's a fridge. Uh, of course, you got a bed to log out in, which is nice. It does have a toilet. I believe it's a full toilet. Uh, no, maybe just a toilet. Okay. I th thought that was a toilet. It is not. Maybe not as luxurious as I thought, uh, but they all fly nice. And this is the 315 P, which is their exploration version. And um, you can, it does come with a tractor beam. You notice it's got the two guns on the side and the two missiles there. And that's got kind of this weird camera thing. That is actually going to be a tractor beam. And we might be seeing that as early as 319, maybe. So the 300 series all fly really nice. They are, they're performance vehicles, so. They change vector very quickly. They accelerate very quickly. That's going to be true for all origin ships, even when you get up to the big guys. Uh, fun ship to fly. It's just a question of whether you want to pay the premium for them, which is really what it all comes down to with these ships. So why have a 315P in my fleet? That is a fair question. And honestly, if there's one of the ships I've shown that could possibly get melted, this is this is a likely candidate. Uh, but a short range. Well, that's the thing is that these things aren't even necessarily short range. Um, a ship that flies like this one does with the tractor beam, with a bed you can log out in and a place that you can do hygiene things and eat food and store food and stuff like that. Not terrible to have in a fleet. Uh, it's kind of niche, but I could see a use for it. Again, if I were probably going to melt a ship, 
of the ones I've shown so far. This is the one that I have a least well-defined plan for. Um, that's more like it could be useful, so I don't want to ditch it yet until I kind of see more what exploration gameplay is. Um, but the ship flies really nice, so it's kind of... It's kind of a joy to fly, I'll put it that way. So one last thing I'll say is that you can pull the tractor beam. I, I believe you can pull the tractor beam and put a size either four or five gun up there. I think it's a size four. Uh, so you can actually increase the firepower of these things pretty well. A little lurking Andromeda there. I don't know what that's about. Okay, so again, this is another variant of a 300 series, so I won't uh, won't go into too much detail on this one, but this one is the combat variant. This is the 325A. And so much like the 315, this is one that I kind of have a personal connection to and I love the way it flies. But there are other combat ships that probably do what it do to what it does better. I guess I took on the characteristics of my shirt there. Uh, but yeah, it is. They just fly really nice. Um, I could see with the 300 series. Um, Origin is a performance ship line. And so, I mean, they're designed to move pretty well. And so you can see the, the interior is basically the same. Although uh, when they had the rework, they had an option for customization. That's funny. I actually didn't notice that monitor there. Um, again, you got the toilet there. So again, the game you start playing with Origin ships is what's its niche? So what role do these ships play in the verse? Like, how do they compete against the ships that they're contemporary with? And I think the Origin ships, at least the 300 series, where they will start excelling is when aerodynamics comes into the game. Uh, theoretically, with 319, I could see a dropping with that. They've got a lot of wing space on them, or a lot of wing surface. Uh, so I could see them retaining their maneuverability and performance when they're actually flying in atmospheres, uh, which could give them an edge over the sort of more meta ships that uh, don't have the advantage. Of course, the Arrow and the Gladius both have wing surface, too, so won't really have an edge over them. But I could see this ship having an edge over something like, say, a Cutlass. Um, again, they're very fast. They get up to speed very well. They fly very intuitively and quickly. So, I mean, you could sort of see right there. I've, I've done this test with other ships where you watch the X and you see how fast it catches up to you. That's pretty fast. So this level of ship is high performance and it lives up to that. So for guns, this thing has... Um, the Revenant up front, which is a size four. I'm trying to remember if that's actually gimbaled or not. I don't think it is. I think that's fixed. And then you've got the um, size either three or fours on the wing. So, I mean, it's it's got decent firepower. This thing can hold its own in combat. You're probably going to get ripped up by a Gladius or, or an Arrow, but they rip up everything. So this ship, just because of its relative size, uh, it's around the size of a Titan. It's it's a bigger ship, so it's an easier target than those smaller ships. Uh, and that's one of the things that kind of does it in. Um, but once range actually starts to matter, uh, that could be a different situation. Um, it could actually be a pretty good ship when range comes into consideration because this thing will almost certainly have better range than like an arrow or a gladius uh probably getting up there into the titan range the 
whole origin series tend to be fuel sippers. They tend to be very efficient with their fuel use, both guanam and hyd uh, hydrogen. It's um, kind of what they're known for. Again, performance, but also economy as far as their consumption of things. So the ship holds up in combat probably more against NPCs, all things being equal. The ship shouldn't be bad, uh, probably won't be heavily armored, just given what it is. Uh, I mean, it's you don't put a battle cannon on a BMW, for example. I think I remember where that guy is. I think I'm coming in upside down. Oh, and this is something I forgot to mention. So you got this gigantic skylight in here. So it really is a beautiful ship. So, I mean, if you're going to tour the verse, um, there are uglier ships you could do it in. It just kind of goes back to what I've said with a few other ships that if the aesthetic and the feel of this ship, if you dig it, who the hell cares what anyone else thinks? You know, fly what you want to fly. It's a game. OK, so I was debating doing this ship out of order uh, because there's some comparisons that I wanted to make to the one that's coming after it. This is the 400i and um, and this is a relatively new ship having dropped, I think, a year ago, maybe two years ago. I think it's two years ago because it's the one that they showed off for uh, Pyro. This is sort of what I like to call the uh, Darth Maul ship because it kind of looks. It's probably the most Star Wars looking ship in the game, uh, like all origin ships, not a combat ship. It has uh, three groups of size three guns, which puts it on par with the Mercury Star Runner. So it's got those two right there, which the pilot controls, and then it's got the two turrets on the back. You can, unlike the Star Runner, pull these and put on fixed. Right now they're gimbal. I usually run it with fixed size fours, not because I want to get in combat, just because it looks cool. And it does have some missiles, but I was going to show you some of the features first. So first thing, it's got this, which is a hanger for a bike, which is the X1, which is probably by the time you see this video will have started entering actual construction. Uh, and we could be seeing that thing maybe by the middle of the year, although I'd guess more likely would be um, I or September ish. Uh, so it's got that. It does have this cargo bay down here. But you'll note. How far under the ship it is and how low this ship is, that actually does prevent quite a few vehicles from getting in here. One of the things they did try when they dropped this was making it so that the shocks on the rock would compress just a little bit more. Um, they tried it for a few test patches and it, it was causing too many issues like the rock would actually jitter and cause damage to the ship and damage to the rock. Uh, so they eventually pulled that idea. Um, so this ship actually can't carry a rock. It can carry, I think, all the Cyclones. Um, pretty sure the Ursa is out, although I don't think I've tested that one. So anything bigger than a Cyclone, you're kind of taking your chances on. Um, but it is a really neat ship. Again, this is one of those things. I'll go ahead and I'll open it up and start taking it on the tour on the inside. This has quite possibly one of the best interiors, in my opinion, in the game, just because there's no wasted space. And that <laughs> you do have the floating door panel, but 318 was a rough patch. They'll get to it eventually. So there's a gravity generator. You've got all of your suits right here. 
docking ring right there where you can go EVA, which is actually kind of a nice feature. But I mean, you've got your suits here, you've got your exit here, you've got an exit there. It all makes sense. There's no wasted space here. Like this is almost the outside of the ship. The ship tapers down. You can actually see your bike when it's in there. Gravity generator again has a space. So you come back here. Again, it kind of has this glass wall, but in this ship, I don't mind it so much. Um, I mean, it is kind of wasted space, but it's kind of extravagant at the same time that if anything lights on fire, it'll be contained in this room. And these are your components here. Again, this ship, the components are actually physicalized. So if we get the ability to pull components in 318.1, you will be able to pull components in this. Uh, same thing over there. And then coming back this way, you got your, your hangar right here for ships. Um, I believe these are the escape pods and you got four of them. You've got more components back here. Uh, this is also your cargo bay. Um, so again, just everything makes sense and has a place, which is nice. Everything's got physicalized buttons too. Again, you've got your little elevator, but you've also got a ladder just in case the elevator isn't working or you don't trust elevators, which some people in my org don't trust this elevator because it killed them once when the game first dropped or when the ship first dropped. It's a really fast elevator, which is nice. Um, Got some weird issues going on there, but open this up. There's your bathroom. Uh, I believe. What's this? Oh, the corridor. OK, uh, but yeah, the toilet, a, a nice one, but a toilet. Then your captain's quarters are over here. Got his own. Sh uh, what am I going to try to say? Closet. Got a closet there. Uh, storage under the bed, which actually functions. You can open it uh, and it just opens inventory right now. But eventually that will be physical as cargo. Come over here. You've got the crew quarters, two beds of their own. You've actually got a window to the outside. Once we take off, I'm sure you can see out that for whatever reason, it's not working right now. Uh, pretty nice kitchen, dining area. And then because it is an exploration ship, it does have the sort of navigation explorer table here, but it's also got this great window you can look out. So again, the design on this ship, there's no wasted space. So it's kind of one of those ships that when they dropped it, everybody was like, oh, wow. OK, CIG has finally figured out how to make the interiors of these ships feel like interiors of ships. And to carry that one step further, you can sort of see that the bridge is sitting probably about halfway back on the ship. So you've got this really long nose on the 400i. And uh, to be honest, as someone that's going for their captain's license layer this year in real boats, it's probably the most boat-like ship in the first. Uh, this in the 890. So if you watched any of my shows, I'd, I'd say through the last year or so, maybe year and a half, this thing was largely my daily driver between this and the MSR. Like if I wanted to do uh, rock mining or something like that. I generally take the MSR. If I just kind of wanted to see the verse, I generally take this thing just because, again, Origin flies really nice. This ship is supposed to be the contemporary of the Constellation series. So you think Constellation, Corsair, MSR, and this thing. If you compare this against any of the ships that it's in theory a contemporary with, it's not quite as good. Like it can't carry as much cargo. It doesn't have as much weapons. Um, like the MSR, it's got the same weapons as the MSR, but the MSR carries way more cargo. This thing's arguably more nimble, but the MSR definitely out accelerates it. 
you got the Kani, obviously carries a lot more weapons, is a lot more beefy than it. Uh, you got the Corsair, again, tons more weapons and probably carries more cargo. So what's this thing's purpose? And then you start thinking, you put it up against those ships and it's actually smaller. Um, and so you look one step down and you start looking at the Cutlass and the Freelancer. And that's where this thing kind of shines is that it's clearly better than that level of ship. And so it kind of goes back to the theory that Origin is a weird tweener. It's kind of half step up from the freelancers and cutties of the world, but a half step down from the MSRs, Corsairs and Connies. And if you think about it that way, um, it's it's a solid ship because it's in its own niche. Uh, but cost wise, I mean, it's again, it's kind of the 300i problem that because there's kind of a luxury tax premium on this thing, the cost of this ship is almost up there with the Constellations, MSRs and Corsairs. So if you were gonna take a step from like a freelancer or a cutlass to this, why wouldn't you just take the step all the way up to a constellation MSR or Connie. So it really comes down to what style of ship you want. And one thing this ship has in spades is style. So if you're going for aesthetics, if you like the way origin ships fly, uh, this is a great ship, and this ship will definitely be staying in my fleet. Uh, it might be sitting in a hangar on a planet somewhere, or I'll let someone I really like be the person that takes this thing out for the carnival. Uh, but all in all, great ship. It is, it is just a fun ship to fly. It's it's definitely got the utility. And again, origin ships have pretty good range. So this thing will actually do fairly well when it lands in Pyro. It may not be able to fight off all the pirates, but it might be able to outrun them. And again, this thing wouldn't have been my daily driver if I didn't enjoy flying it. So that's kind of the note that I'll end with is that I kind of got this thing as a placeholder as a, oh, hey, that ship looks kind of like the ship that Darth Maul flew. It's kind of fun looking and nostalgic, and I'll probably use it as a placeholder for something else. And then I flew it a few times and yeah, it's it's a fun ship to fly around in. If you and a friend or you and a couple friends want to see the verse or you want to take someone on a tour of the verse, there are definitely worse ships you could do it in. OK, and this will be the last ship on the lineup right here. So this is the Origin 600i. I believe this one ended up dropping in. I think the concept dropped in 2016 and they ended up building it in 2017. This is a prime example of when they built the Banu Merchantman, when they just had one person working on it, kind of putting it together. And I was saying, yeah, I'm actually OK with that. It's largely because of the way this ship turned out is because ships that are made by committee and I, I mean, actually, like laid out and designed by committee, like uh, when you actually start putting on textures and stuff like that and going beyond white box. Yeah, probably a good idea to have more than one person working on it, especially since they're different kinds of artists. Uh, I'll take you on a quick tour of this one. Uh, this is the 600i Explorer version, which uh, fits with my what I want to do in the bird. This one is undergoing a rework. And so when I take you on a tour of this thing, it's going to be relatively brief. This is the cargo bay and the Explorer version. It's different because it actually has 
a larger cargo bay and a vehicle can fit in here. Right now, an Ursa Rover barely fits in here. In the final version, a uh, Tonk will be able to fit in here. So one of the big complaints everybody had about this ship is you have this thing that's the size of a Starfarer that carries less cargo than a Freelancer Max. So it, it didn't really make sense. Not too sure what those are. Uh, one of the unique things, at least on this version, is the cargo actually plugs into the wall here, which is kind of cool. I hope they kind of keep an aspect of that in the new ship, uh, the new version. Uh, but just to compare it to the 400i, there's just tons of wasted space. Like, yeah, a big granite wall is cool, but is there nothing else you could have done with that hallway? And this is the this is the crew quarters. You've got a ballroom here where some, they could enjoy ballroom dancing. Whereas you look at the Corsair is arguably more luxurious because they each have their own rooms. Could you imagine just waking up here butt naked and hopping out of bed looking at your four crewmates? Yeah, it would kind of suck. But again, it's it's just kind of vastly wasted space that you would never see on a real ship like an ocean going yacht. Every space would be utilized and that's sort of what luxury is. And then you come in here. Yeah, I guess those don't open now. Uh, you got your escape pods, which is kind of nice, and you got your bathroom, which is opulent, which that looks pretty cool. It's still kind of oversized for what it needs to do. So we'll come back over here. OK, and then coming out this way, you've got this elevator here and I'll just go ahead and take you up. And again, the traversals on this ship are bizarre. Imagine there is a fire or something on this ship trying to navigate this thing and you start to see the problem. So the bridge is back through there. This is the exploration room. Again, just a ton of wasted space. You've got two scanning stations there. You've got glass where you can look down. There's some cool elements in this ship. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. There are some very cool things. There's your component room. I'm a little leery of going inside because I'm not sure if the doors are broken on this or not. Uh, you got to So just for as a design element, you have your bar here. And your bartender can look out into the vast reaches of space while your guests sit on this side of the bar and get to look at the bartender in the wall. So weird design choice there. Um, Coming down here again, you have a bunch of people that are looking at the table. And these people here on this little love seat can actually look out. Ideally, if you were designing this, you'd have that the opposite way. You'd have a big seat here and like little seats or something entertaining here. And then heading down. You've kind of got recreation rooms here. Again, there are worse things that you could explore the verse in. And then you got your pool table back here, which is weird. I I almost never come back here just because the traversals are so weird. You've got a TV, which actually is something that you would find a luxury on. Uh, more cargo stored in here. I believe that is just a fridge memory serves. I think this is more components. But again, you've kind of got your engineering and cargo section right off of your entertainment section. So why isn't this over where the crew would be? It's there's some really, really weird design choices in the ship, which is a shame because it is a gorgeous ship. Otherwise, like the externals on it, are incredible. 
Uh, okay, so when we came in the ship, we came in from right there. We walked through there. Now we're just on the next level up. And again, very cool element, but look at all the wasted space. Like this is where I would have my components is right here. Like right off the bridge, something goes wrong. You just have to run. Oh, I didn't show you one of the cooler parts. So coming in here, going down to the lower deck. Last time we went this that way, now we're going to come this way. This room should stay pretty much how it is, although make this one way glass. Uh, other than that, it's awesome. Apparently in the rework, they switched it. So the bathrooms on this side. And I guess a desk is over here, but this is kind of cool. Most people miss this. This is your luxury bathroom right back there is your toilet. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. So this room. Well done, very well done. Everything from here back, not so much. And that's one of the reasons why they are redoing the ship, why it's having more than just sort of like a gold standard pass where they put in buttons, especially after seeing the 400 I, you can see what they can do with interiors. You see this and you're kind of like, what the hell happened with this ship? Like half of your bridge, literally half of your bridge is just literally just wasted space. Why are there no components here? Why is there nothing in here? It's it's just weird choices. So as far as utility goes and what the ship is going to do in the verse, that's a whole different question. So this ship is uh, the Explorer version. I'm haven't quite decided if I'm going to engage in any transport, maybe ancillary when I take out my Banner Merchantman, like if I have a VIP or something like that, or there's some sort of peace negotiations on my merchant man, then we will. Uh, a couple other points I want to pass on. I'm hoping they adopt the landing gear. So you can sort of see on this picture, the 600i is much sleeker looking. Uh, the guns are internal and the landing gear is much more lower slung. Uh, think of it more like how the Corsair's landing gear is. They're very close to the ground, just makes the ship look sleek. Granted, you wouldn't be able to drive a ship up and under it. Uh, but going back to the ship, uh, you can sort of tell the guns are just kind of like poking out on it and really destroys its lines. Uh, what I was hoping in the concept images, so you can sort of see this red tongue that's sticking out. What we all thought was that was a ramp that was going to come down and ramps are they have far more utility than the elevators um, or they used to. The elevators are kind of they've, they've largely fixed the physics issues, but I would rather have a ramp here and then kind of have the garage in the back of the ship kind of in between the two engines and then you free up all the space up here for cargo and exploration gear and everything else. Uh, so with all my complaining out of the way, because we are getting a rework on this ship finally, let's go ahead and take off. So again, this kind of fits what I was saying about origin is this ship is supposed to be a contemporary with the Constellation, the MSR, and uh, the Corsair. That was the original goal of it. And this thing is the size of a Starfarer. So there isn't really another ship in this thing's class. So once again, it's like a half step up, but it's not quite to the capital size class, which the 890 jump is. Um, and I'll polish it off by saying that just on the topic of an 890, the Carnival does have an 890 in the fleet, uh, but whether it'll be up for grabs or not will be up tonight. I actually don't have one. Uh, this was the largest luxury ship I would have. And even this one, I only got it because there was a uh, there was an Explorer version. 
So this is the last of my named ships. This is Pharaoh. Uh, and again, this one will be staying in my fleet. Since it's an exploration version, uh, it'll probably be hanging close to my merchantman. And again, kind of like the Carrick, working as an early warning system. Uh, final, final thing I'll point out is the guns on the 600i are not a joke. It has very large guns. And again, for a ship the size of a Starfarer, uh, it gets up to speed pretty quickly and flies very well. It is, um, like all Origin ships, it's, it's still performance. So just to kind of give you a sense for that performance, turn that off. Not horrible. So could you take out fighters with it? Maybe if you engage them from long enough away. Uh, speaking of which, missiles, 16 arresters, uh, which is fewer missiles than the Constellation carries, but still not bad. And when you combine that with the big cannons on this thing. Uh, there's a reason why some people run the 600i and call it the Orca Whale. Uh, it In combat, it's one of those ships that combined with the strength of its shields and the size of its guns, it can be hard to tangle with. Uh, Crew-wise, you can solo this thing once engineering and all of that is in the game i would not recommend it because you'll you'll have to have an engineer uh at least um and you'll want a co-pilot to help you you do have two extra seats there and they control the turrets which are actually hidden back here uh, i believe one drops from there and one pops up from that sort of red section near the back right there. Uh, so they both face backwards. They shoot backwards. Uh, they, I think the bottom one actually can shoot forwards, uh, but that's not what it's made to do. Those guns, I believe they're two size threes. They point backwards, uh, but your, your big guns up front are pilot controlled, which is kind of nice. So just given the maneuverability of this thing, you can actually fly it through an asteroid field and it's slightly less terrifying than when you're doing so in a starfarer i'll just put that out there uh all in all nice ship this one is definitely staying in my fleet uh <laughs> probably won't be handing this one over to just anyone uh much like the carrick it's kind of like a treasured part of my fleet so um yeah, who knows? Maybe it's you. Other things to love about this ship, great viz. So despite the fact it's huge, you can just see everything out of this ship. Uh, so not likely people will be sneaking up with, on you, especially if you put people in those turrets. It is a big ship, though. Again, this thing is roughly the size of the Starfare. Death blimp. And so from the Bridge of the Pharaohs, see you next time for RSI Day. Mm -hmm.